Hello and welcome to this video instruction about how to use the Polar Grid Render Farm for baking and rendering simulations with the Flip Fluids add-on for Blender. Please notice that the Polar Grid add-on and workflow still is in development, so this can be understood as a first look into the workflow. It's not the final instruction video and some changes will be made in the future. Let me explain how the add-on works. You prepare your Blender scene for baking and for rendering. For baking, the Polar Grid add-on will send your files to a Polar Grid baking server and when baking has been finished, you can download all baking files as a zip file. For rendering, the Polar Grid add-on will send all baking files to a Polar Grid render server and when rendering has been finished, you can download all rendered files. One notice here, as the FlipFluids add-on integration still is in development, baking and rendering are two different services. That means you cannot start a render service directly after baking services has been finished. It's required to do this in a separate process. Okay, let's begin with downloading the Polar Grid add-on. You will find a link in the video description. On polargrid.space, click the Learn More button on the left half of the screen. This opens a submenu where you find downloads. Don't get confused by the word plugin because it's a common add-on for Blender. We're using Blender 2.8.2 on our systems, so we choose to download a Polar Grid add-on that matches our Blender version. Before we are going to install the add-on, let's have a quick view on the flat rates. Click back, learn more, and then on flat rates. Here you will find some interesting hardware setups that can be used for 24 hours on 7 days, depending on what you are looking for. And now have a quick look to the pricing table. Click back, learn more, and then on pricing. This list will give you a detailed look into possible setups for your job. Ok, this was just for some side information, let's get back to the installation process. Start Blender, click on Edit and Preferences. Click on Add-ons on the left side. Then hit this Install button on the top. Find your downloaded add-on. Select it and click on Install Add-on. The installation will be finished in a few seconds. If you cannot see the Polar Grid add-on in the list, type it in the search box. Then click the small checkbox here to enable the add-on and the white arrow to open some settings. Setting things up is easy. Just type in your email address. I'll use this blenderphysics.com at gmail.com and click the uh, request renew token button. Please pay attention to upper and lower case as Polar Grid will save your email address exact in the way you typed it in. A small text please look in your inbox on the bottom of the screen tells you to check for new mails. So let's do this. Here's the email I got from Polar Grid. Copy the token number to the clipboard and paste it into the token field in Blender. Then click on validate token. The message token has been validated appears and the add-on is ready. Click that box on the lower left to save the preferences and close the window. Let me show you how it works with a simple scene I've prepared for this video. It's a simple scene with three spheres as fluid objects in a domain. First thing you should always do is to enable cycles and GPU for rendering. Because, as long as EV is enabled for rendering, you will miss some settings. This is because EV rendering will be possible using an AnyDesk connection. This is a remote desktop connection where you can remote a Polar Grid computer to work on and render your scene like you would sit on your own computer. When Cycles has been enabled, open the Scene Properties panel on the right. We should type in our project path here. Click on that folder icon 
and search your projects folder. When being in, copy the complete paths from the top as we need an absolute path and paste it into the project path field. When done, the Anon will automatically create a scene ID. Whenever you are going to use new, different simulation settings, you have to generate a new scene ID by clicking on that generate button before baking using PolarGrid. This ID tells the PolarGrid server that changes has been made. Save the file and whenever a new scene ID has been generated, save your file with a new file name. Okay, I would like to bake this scene using PolarGrid. As we are talking about baking, PolarGrid plays their PolarGrid add-on menu in the Physics Properties panel on the right. This field is exactly the same as you can find in the render settings. Don't get confused by the word PolarGrid render as this is the add-on name. What services we can use will be visible in the Server Pools drop-down field after clicking on Fetch Available Pools. For this video, PolarGrid gave me access to baking and rendering systems as you can see in the drop-down box. If this is empty, you have to visit the online shop. To do this, click on View Jobs. Your internet browser will open with a PolarGrid page. This is the page where you can see everything that happens with your scene. No matter if you are baking or rendering, everything will be visible here. On the top is the Shop button. Click on it. Here you can choose what services you would like to buy. To see what performance you can expect, choose one of them and then click the Next button. As we are talking about baking yet, click on Baking Services and then Next. Click on this grey field on the top to open a detailed description. You have all required information here. Click that little field on the upper right and choose how many of the systems are required for you. Then click Next. Choose your price and then Pay. Let's have a look to the other options. Click on Previous, select Professional Services and Next. By clicking on the grey fields, you can open detailed information. Let's open the 3 times Quadro field. PolarGrid plays some useful information here, like for what kind of renderings this system will be good. Particles and hair as example here. Ordering works the same way like with the baking services. Lastly, let's have a look to the flat rates. The design from this side is a bit different actually. If you would like to see detailed information, click on the Terms and Conditions field. Let's do this for that power machine with 20 cores. And if this is what you are looking for, make sure it's checked and click the Next button to pay. Ok, when you bought some services, jump back into Blender. Let's bake this simple scene here. While the domain is selected, let's have a look to the Polar Grid field. The thing is that this Bake on Polar Grid button cannot be clicked as long as you didn't choose a baking server from the drop down field. I choose Thread Ripper Baking Server, and as you can see, the button becomes brighter grey. So let's click it. You can see that the add on sends your files to the Polar Grid server. Let's check what happens there by clicking on View Jobs. Your internet browser opens with the Overview page. Actually, for baking, there is no working progress bar. Just the information that this job is in progress. This site refreshes automatically in a cycle of some seconds. So we have to wait until baking has been finished. Meanwhile, we could check our orders by clicking on Orders. This page gives you all information about when you bought services and how long you can use them, as you can see in this text here. Whenever you're going to upload data for baking or rendering, make sure that your orders still are active. When baking has been finished, click on the Info button. A new page opens with a Download button. All baked scenes will have the same zip file name actually. This will be fixed in the future. 
so that you cannot confuse anything, you should download the file with a right click and choose a file name that corresponds to your Blender file. So right click, save link as and enter a file name. Then click save. This way you keep the overview in your download folder. When the zip file has been downloaded, let's look directly into the download folder. Here is our file. Open it. It contains all the files that the Flip Fluids Adder needs. All we have to do now is to extract it to a proper directory. Simply open the directory of your project. For me, the path still is on the clipboard, which is why I can simply paste it now. Let's create a directory for the downloaded files. An example, simple scene, underline, bake files. And now we unzip the baking data into this directory. Then we copy this folder to the clipboard. Back to Blender. While the domain is selected and we are in the physics properties panel on the right, open the flip fluid cache field. Paste the path from the clipboard here or select it using the small folder icon on the right. Then make the path relative by clicking the make relative button. This is very important, otherwise the render farm cannot find the bake files. As you can see, a red reset button appears. That means the Flip Fluids add-on found baking data. Play the animation. Fantastic! The next step is to render this scene using Polar Grid. As told you before, rendering is a separate task and needs to send all data back to Polar Grid. Even if the data is already at Polar Grid, it is currently the case that it is on a different system and cannot yet be automatically passed on internally. Let's prepare the scene for rendering. Select the Flip Fluid surface and choose a material from the drop down field on the right. Let's enable Render Preview to see how the scene actually looks. I would like to use a HDRI image for lighting. As I have installed an add-on for this, I open the World Properties panel, enable HDRI and choose something I like. Disable Render Preview and check all other settings like Samples and Resolution. And in the Output Properties panel, the Frame Range. And then you should render one frame on your system to check if the final image looks good. If so, here comes a very important step. We have to pack all data into our blend file. Otherwise, it could happen that PolarGrid missed some HDRI images, in example. To do this, open the File menu, External Data, and check Automatically Pack into Blend Files. A small info field appears on the bottom. Then save the file. Select the domain. Jump back to the Physics Properties panel, just to see that there is no option to render the scene, as this Polar Grid render field is for baking only. So go to the Render Properties panel and click on Render Animation there. You can follow the progress of uploading all files to the Polar Grid server. It can happen that the progress bar is at 100% and then works reverse. 
This will be fixed in future versions. Just wait until all data has been uploaded. You can click on view jobs, but you won't see the new render job as long as the files are on their way. When uploading successfully finished, the job appears in the overview. It's required to open the extended mode to find out what file was from a render job or from a baking job. For a little while you might see queued as status, what means the server is preparing the files or your time is up. You can follow the progress of rendering simply by clicking the info button. All frames that has been rendered will be visible here. You can click them to zoom in or download a single frame. Of course, it is not required to download all frames each by each. Polar Grid automatically packs 100 frames into a zip file as soon as they have been finished. That means every 100 frames you can download a zip file. Details give you an overview. While tasks show you every task the server is doing. Don't misunderstand tasks as frames. There can be many more tasks than frames to render. Okay, and there's also that coupons field. Whenever you have a coupon code, this is a place where to use it. Type it into this field, click submit and enjoy great promotions from Polar Grid. By the way, in the video description is a coupon code for you. Check it out. Okay, thank you for watching this video. As soon as there are any news from the Polar Grid development, we will inform you. Bye bye. <laughs>